just a quick little video. I'm just playing with one of these little changeover boards. This is a like 12 to 24 volt changeover board. So the idea is you have a battery supply coming in here and some other main supply. So it's like a little switch over thing. So if you lose your main supply, it'll drop over the battery. Okay, so it's like a little backup system, redundancy kind of thing. So you got the outputs over here. So you have 12 volts to 24 volts on these connections here. And if this one drops off, it will switch over to this one automatically and continue an output. Now what I found, relays always you have a change over time. Single pole relay. Now turn on time is about two milliseconds to change over. So if you're running from this one and you switch over to this one by connecting power to that, the change over is about two milliseconds. So you lose power for about two milliseconds on that connection. Now when you turn off, a relay is always slower to turn off than it is to turn on. So turning off, which means when you lose power from this one and it changes onto this one, it was actually about 100 milliseconds. And I think, well, that's a bit long. Now what it actually has is a capacitor just here, which I've taken off. Uh, here it is. Took this off. It's a quality Chong X brand. <laughs> that's 105 degree rated though. 220 microfarad, 25 volt. That's what's rated for on there. And this is actually across the output of the buck converter that's on there, which drives the relay. All right. So this is a, basically across the relay coil to smooth out the buck converter supply. So basically, what we've got on here is a little buck converter chip. So you see, power comes in, goes through that diode, power supply capacitor, which is running the supply for this chip here. Right, this chip is then running a sort of buck circuit here, and that capacitor is normally across the output, which has also got these other smoothing caps across it, the little ceramic ones. It's got a feedback circuit for those resistors, go back to the chips, so it knows what it's actually doing, and then that supply is actually feeding this relay. Right, so this capacitor is across this relay coil. And 220 microfarad, that's a fair size. Now, what happens, that capacitor's got to discharge, right? So if that capacitor's taking too long to discharge, the relay coil will take longer to turn off because it's got a slope, right? so the voltage will slope down. I can demonstrate that potentially on a scope, but I'm going to show you what I've done. I've changed that capacitor to this one, this temporary, this one I'm playing around. It's a 33 microfarad, so I've gone from a 220 down to 33. My original turn-off time was 100 milliseconds between changeover, right? between loss of power and changing onto the battery supply. And that was too long. I didn't like that supply line. 100 milliseconds, it might be okay in some circumstances, but I wanted a quicker time than that. I wanted to switch off quicker. So, I've modified it with this capacitor. Simple modification. And I'll show you what I've got. So, after changing the capacitor, this is what I was getting. As you can see, it's now down to about 30 milliseconds. So, that's much better. It's like 31 milliseconds or something. I've gone from 100 milliseconds down to 30 milliseconds just by changing the capacitor. And you can see you've got here... You see that? It's contact bounce. So I thought I'd show you this because you can actually see the contact bounce in it. Which I thought was quite interesting. You don't often see that sort of thing. It's not easy to measure all the time. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Certainly just um, hook back up again, alright. And I'll do another test. I've got it set to normal triggering, so you should be able to see it easy enough. So that's the on time. So it's about 2 milliseconds. I'll switch it again, so, oh, bouncing off it, so there's the on time, just says about 2 milliseconds. This step here is because I've got two voltages coming in, so I can see the difference between them. So one's 13 volts, one's 12 volts, so I know which one I'm actually running on at the time. And then there's the switch off stage, right, and you can see that's the difference between on and that's the difference between off. So if you're using relays, don't assume that they switch instantly or they're particularly quick. And so the off state is always slower than the on state. The magnetic field gradually collapses and so you get a delay between the off and then you also get the contact bounce. This contact bounce can be an issue if you're doing control circuitry and you're trying to measure a relay output that can be problematic. Sometimes you need to put buffering like smoothing the capacitance across it or something like that to smooth it out. In my situation I don't care about that. Contact bounce does not matter. I just need the thing to be switching quickly. So this is 30 milliseconds with a 33 microfarad capacitor. Let's try changing it again. So I'll just change it to a 10 microfarad. Let's hook up the scope. This might bounce around a bit. Okay. Power on. That was from no power state. So we'll do switching. So we'll turn it off. That's turning on time. So that's normal. Two milliseconds as before. So with 10 microfarad, we're getting down a bit further. Right, so now you're getting here. It's like 20 milliseconds with a lot more relay bounce. It's 20 milliseconds with a lot more contact bounce. So going from 33 microfarad to 10 microfarad, which is the third of the capacitance, 
we're not getting as much of a gain. We're getting gain still, but it's not as much. They're sort of showing 20 milliseconds again. And here, you can actually see like ringing in the power supply. So I think I've gone too low there. I think I might go back to 33 microfarad and leave it there, because that looks like it's going to be a bit cleaner. Well, here you go, all done. It works. Easy enough.